So today I'm joined by Sarah Milliard, Research Manager at On Device Research, and she's here to explain in more detail exactly how to read a brand impact report. So Sarah, perhaps we can first start by exploring how a brand report is typically structured. Yeah, so our reports are typically split into two different sections. So we have the brand impact section and then we have the creative review section. But before I dig deeper into what we actually measure, um, I'll just let you know how to read a um, typical brand impact slide. So on the left hand side, we have the control versus the exposed, and this is at a total campaign level. So as a reminder, the control are those that haven't seen the ad um, versus the exposed, who are those that have. And underneath there, we have the delta difference, which is the difference between the control and exposed. And at on device, we use percentage point uplift rather than percentage point increase. This is because we believe that it better reflects the success of the campaign. For instance, if awareness shifted from 1% to 2%, we would say that's a plus 1% uplift there. But if you were to use percentage point increase, then that would be a 100% um, increase, which we believe is, can be quite misleading and not um, representative of exactly how successful the campaign has been. Um, so as well as measuring um, the success at an overall um, level, we can also then split by audiences. So we can split by different demographics, so male, female, um, and we can also split by ages. So for instance, 18 to 34, 35 plus. Um, but we can also we can also split by different types of audiences as well. So for instance, brand users um, or non-brand users, but also um, we can split by attitudinal behavioral as well. So for instance, those that are engaged in sustainability. Perfect. So that's a really good overview of the importance of the difference between percentage point uplift and percentage point increase. But what else can brands typically get from a brand impact report? Yeah, so we typically measure um, awareness, consideration and purchase intent. Um, awareness, we um, measure two different types of awareness. So we look at spontaneous awareness, which is where respondents are asked an open-ended question to type in um, which brands come to mind when they think of a, a certain category. Um, so we can look at total mentions of the brand there, but we can also look at first mentions to look at top of mind at performance too. Um, and then we also uh, measure prompted awareness, which is where respondents are shown a list of brands and they are asked to identify which brands they've heard of um, before today. So we can measure wider brand awareness, but we can also measure more specific um, model or range awareness too. Uh, we also measure consideration. So um, consideration is typically split out by six different statements. So the only brand I would consider, brand I would consider above other brands, brand I would consider alongside other brands, brands um, that I would consider but only after other brands, unlikely to consider and would never consider. And um, we define consideration as a net of the top three box, so the only brand I would consider, brand I would consider above others, and brand I would consider alongside others. But we can also measure preference as well, which is the top two box, so the only brand I would consider and brand I would consider above others. And we can measure um, also the consideration or preference uh, in terms of top two competitors. So we can see how the um, brand's consideration and preference sits within the um, competitive landscape as well. And finally, we measure purchase intent, and that is defined as how likely respondents are to purchase the brand tomorrow. So this is split out by five different statements. So um, extremely likely to purchase tomorrow, probably likely, unsure, probably unlikely, and extremely unlikely. And what we do is we create a net of the top two box, so extremely likely and probably likely. Um, and as with consideration, we also can um, measure purchase intent for two competitors of the brand to see where um, it sits within the competitive landscape. Okay, so from that review, it's much clearer on the metrics that fit into the, the, the brand impact side of the report. Um, but how about when it comes to the creative section and what can brands typically expect from a creative review? Yeah, so we have um, a creative review section. So this section is only asked to those exposed to the creative. So we no longer have that control versus exposed um, comparison there. Um, so this is typically uh, structured in four different parts. So we have 
um, the emotional response section, which is where we ask respondents to identify exactly how they felt after seeing the creative. So usually um, they're shown five positive statements and five negative statements, and then an indifferent statement. And um, we are able to then create net um, positive emotion, net negative emotion. Um, but we're also able to split out by those um, specific individual statements too. Um, this is also followed by um, a verbatim uh, analysis where we ask respondents why they feel a certain way. And we can look at the verbatims to kind of add some colour as to why they felt the specific emotion that they did um, towards the campaign. And then we can also look at top message takeout. And so the, this, um, we can look at which messages are best communicated by the creative. Um, and we can also uh, assess how many or what the percentages of respondents exposed who felt that there was no clear message communicated by the campaign. Um, and finally, we also measure call to action. So this is defined as um, which actions respondents took or intend to take after um, exposure to the ad. So we can create a net any action, um, but we can also split out by the different actions to see what the um, what action the campaign provoked the most. So for instance, um, uh, product search or product uh, purchase, but also more, um, word of mouth and talking to others about the brand. Thank you for that overview, Sarah, it's really useful. We hope you found this short video today useful on how to read a brand impact report. But should you have any other questions, then please do contact us or visit our website at ondeviceresearch.com.